welcome everyone. I'm Katie Pfeiffer with Volunteer New York. Thank you for joining us for the virtual Volunteer Managers Networking Breakfast. So I hope people brought some food to eat um, <laughs> to enjoy as we as we um, have this conversation. We're gonna have people share kind of the three main takeaways from your group, um, and I'm gonna record it just as an FYI, so that way we can share it out and send it. Oh, Jess, you're recording? I've been recording, yeah. Oh, perfect, even better. Okay, so Arlene and Leslie from the Diversity and Inclusion Group, do you want to kick us off? Uh, we didn't designate. Arlene, did you want to, did you want to speak? How about, Leslie, you want to do it? Three kind of main takeaways or right. ideas. You I, I, I think, you know, the first is with a small organization, just sort of prioritizing um, the work to um, put the effort in to try and diversify, whether we're talking about staff or volunteers or participants or board members, um, you know, to really acknowledge that um, in a small organization, it takes a lot of um, staff time and energy, and and the organization has to prioritize that as a as a, as a, a, a focus. Um, and then, you know, the the other second piece is really developing a plan that makes sense. Like we, I guess, this probably is common sense, but that in order to diversify an organization, um, you can't just do you know sort of a haphazard reaching out to here or there. There needs to be a planned effort um, so both uh, making a commitment to the task of, of um, or the goal of diversifying an organization and then being able to set aside the time to put a, a plan together um, I think those are our two main points are there any other am I missing anything okay great wonderful um, let's go to the working with college students students group Who's the speaker? Catherine, you're Crystal? Yes, I'm here. Okay. We didn't really designate who was going to speak. Um, <laughs> we, we had a small group um, and uh, we were basically just sharing our challenges and Crystal and I might actually be able to work together um, my challenge is I feel like our students are going to be overwhelmed with the screen already, so it's going to be hard to try to get them to do volunteer opportunities virtually, um, and she may have an opportunity with outdoor volunteering that might work for us. Um, so yeah, I don't know, anything else? Um, like Catherine said, basically my volunteers take care of indoor home repairs, and received so many demands of outdoor um, of outdoor um, you know things to do like you know cutting the grass and you know, shoveling the shoveling during the winter time and that's not something that we do um, our volunteers are mostly um, older 50, 50 years old and older so we try not to give them you know very physical um, projects if I, if I should say so so my idea was to have an idea you know, young volunteers participate um, and then you know that's when I just met Catherine so we thought it could be a, a way actually you know um, a way to to work together basically okay. great wonderful um, okay let's move on to the skill-based capacity building group who is the designated speaker there? I took notes, so but I want the rest of the team to feel like they can jump in. Um, I wish Octavia was still on the line because her sharing was probably the best as far as saying that she's worked with and has brought on virtually an intern who is now doing a kind of redirection of a lot of their social media. Um, she said if they use the word pivot one more time, somebody's going to, uh, literally. Um, but she said, yeah, she understood that they had to pivot and that the value of having a social media intern has helped them greatly 
during this time. And she came up with a, a phrase that she's been using, which is trust, transition, and training. So she said she had to trust this virtual intern much more than she thinks she normally would if they were in person, just because we have that tendency to always kind of pull the project back to ourselves a little bit more. But she actually, in Oh, uh, she actually said that she has trusted this intern and because of that, it has been wildly successful. Um, it's made their transition easier and it's made their training um, more prevalent and more uh, accurate for today's needs. So Mary from Volunteer New York, our virtual intern chimed in as well and shared that there is some great value. So if you have the opportunity to bring in an intern with a specialty skill that you're looking for right now, there can be a real pro that can take place during the COVID-19, which is some of the projects that are on back burners that we've been putting off for all these years because the, the weeds, the daily uh, work get in the way. There is a, a positive to bringing somebody in and be able to do those, those pieces right now. And the Westchester Coral Group shared the same. Um, and so we just had some really good interaction around that. Great, thank you. Um, let's turn to our virtual virtual volunteering kind of group. So there are five of them. So I'm just gonna call out the name of the volunteer New York staff person because you might not remember if you were in one, two, or three. So um, let's have Wendy's group, Wendy Armstrong's group. So Wendy, you don't have to be the speaker, but if someone who was in that group is the designated speaker, go ahead. Oddly enough, they chose me to be the speaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, but I'm glad to because I have to say we have, I, I, I want to commend our group. Everybody had something to share and all of them were creative ideas. And the thing is, I know we all feel stymied right now that this is something new and different and uncomfortable, but everyone is rising to the challenge and I, everybody got something from each other there. So I would say it was a wonderful group. Um, so some of the quick takeaways are, um, technology always brings with it its concerns and then the obvious ones on the um, older person side that um, there's fear of technology or not knowing how and um, without some kind of instruction and then interesting enough we heard from from Kira that um, the younger kids don't want to show their videos when they get on there they just don't want people seeing their faces I don't know so there's there are their challenges and we're working to overcome those and I think one of the things that we realize that they good mix of, of fun activities to engage people, make them still feel somewhat involved. And secondly, um, some mission moments. So hear from the people who work in the organization, they do the professional work um, and, and hear you know, the kind of things that are being accomplished and why they should continue to be devoted. And I think one of the ways to, to find out what people's talents are is to do a survey. Um, and then, um, this is not virtual, but it was asked, when can we start going outside? Might that be safe? That would be a nice kind of transitional thing back to the norm. Okay. Great, thank you. How about virtual volunteering two, which is Patty's group? Yes, hi. Um, we really didn't designate a speaker. Um, I can kind of give a summary, and if anybody else in our group wants to pop in, let me know. Um, I kind of asked people to share maybe what their biggest challenge was in the virtual world and if anybody kind of had a success story. Um, and people, a lot of people shared the challenge of technology, um, getting on board and using Zoom, having the resources to use Zoom, whether it's just um, not having internet or not having a computer. Someone in our group shared that there are some school districts that are asking for Chromebooks to come back over the summer. So there's a big concern that these students who have had access to computers um, during the school year are now losing them over the summer. Um, I had not heard that yet, so I'm surprised to hear that. So um, I don't know if other people are hearing the same in their school districts or if these are you know, individual choices from each school district. And um, the other challenge, I think, for all of us was building relationships. We all know that um, part of the rewards of volunteering is the personal relationships that people, and through Zoom, it's just much more challenging, either because it's done more on a group setting and not on that personal one-to-one -one setting. So that's a challenge that many in our group was feeling. How do we continue to um, develop relationships while we're on Zoom, especially if people are having a difficult time 
with technology and using Zoom. So I guess some people are just using phone calls. I know at Volunteer New York, we literally made phone calls to some of our senior volunteers because they were not on technology. And then um, someone had shared that they're being more diverse in their volunteer pool. Um, so thinking outside the box and whoever you thought your typical volunteer might be because you are on Zoom, you can broaden that. Um, so depending on if you're going to come back to in-person volunteering, you may not want to recruit volunteers from Hawaii or Alaska because they won't be able to come in and tutor your student. But, um, you know, rethinking um, who your volunteer is and you might have an opportunity to, to be broader. And as we shift to those um, new things, new way of doing things, some of that could be a long-term solution. So also thinking about if, as we do come back, how will this impact our program or is this a good thing? Is this a new shift? Because um, we're just redesigning the way we do things. We also, um, people shared about new trainings that they are doing to engage people online. And the question that Elena had at the end is, can Westchester County create a geek squad for people who are technically challenged? You know, at Volunteer New York, we talk about that app that for people who are visually impaired and you can call someone and say, hey, I dropped my pen, where is it? So it's the same type of thing. Like we need somebody to develop a geek squad where anybody at any point can um, use this app. I guess they don't have technology. They can't use an app. So anyway, how can they get connected to skill-based volunteers who can help them with technology? Um, I'll end it with that unless anybody else wanted to add something from my group. May I, may I add a little bit of, of something there, Patty? Um, sure. I started some Zoom meetings with my volunteers and staff so everybody could get to know each other because we service all of Westchester. Everybody doesn't know everybody and they wanted to get to know everybody. But one thing that we do, that I do, is bring up questions. And it's usually questions that sort of connect them and they get to talk to each other and ask each other about. You know, it kind of tells you something about them. You know, so it's, it's always a good, good idea to bring up a question for discussion and then they go back and forth to each other and connect better that way. So it's a lot of personal connection that way. Great, thank you. Let's turn to group number three, Jess's group. But again, doesn't need to be Jess. <laughs> so we didn't designate someone, but I can present some key takeaways. Sorry, we were so involved in talking about our challenges. So um, key takeaways that I got and that I, I really like, by the way, the other groups are talking about doing a survey or asking questions. I think that's really worth it. Um, finding, obviously, virtual ways to engage your volunteers uh, is key. Some of our um, you know, organizations have had to think about their other needs, uh, such as delivering to their uh, membership or to their clients, um, you know, driving uh, groceries and delivering the groceries to them, um, doing at-home projects, so while friendly visits aren't available, uh, making art, perhaps doing social calls or, or finding other ways to connect uh, populations to their, their membership, to their client base. Um, Training on Zoom, of course, as some people mentioned, um, I wanted to point out, you know, we've mentioned this in our agency e-news, anything can be a volunteer opportunity. So if you physically feel like I can't handle all these drives that we're creating or, or these uh, volunteer opportunities, I can't manage volunteers, volunteer coordinators can be volunteers as well. So if you need someone to post listings on our website or, um, you know, try to recruit volunteers, that can be um something important that can help you and that help alleviate the burden. So all you need to do is really oversee them and then they're taking care of the day-to-day -day type of stuff. Um, you know, virtual tours, one of the coolest ideas that Jane brought up for Open Door, um, they can't bring people into their offices anymore, into their medical centers, um, but that's what people really want to do. So connecting them by taking a virtual video tour um, and just showing them, and that kind of brings in new members and new volunteers as well, kind of reaching that audience. Um, thinking about uh, other types of volunteers, so, you know, as Patty mentioned, um, you know, expanding your volunteer base, thinking about students from colleges and schools and youth groups, um, individuals with um, developmental and intellectual disabilities can do a lot of things. They'd be happy to do social calls. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of ways that you can uh, translate that, engaging uh, different groups. Um, and then lastly, we didn't really get to explore this too much, um, but Nancy uh, brought up, you know, her biggest challenge is taking an in-person event, like a walk, 
or something that happens in, in person and translating that to something that you can do. Do you cancel the event? What are your, you know, what kind of suggestions do people have to do? Um, and I'd like to explore this offline too, Nancy, we can connect and try to think of ideas, but you know, Volunteer New York, had its Volunteer Spirit Awards, um, we made it a big virtual uh, event and we opened it up to the public. And so that was a good way to engage people in pre-recorded videos, um, you know, and and have a donation bar next to the, um, the fun, you know, it's a fundraiser, so uh, people donated in real time. And it was just a great way to open up our audience and still have our event and still, uh, you know, do our fundraiser that we want to do each year. Um, and it looked great and it was volunteers can help with the web uh, component of it or you know uh, creating videos or doing interviews and recording them um, you know so so there are many volunteer opportunities with that and so you don't have to lose that in-person event too but I'd love to discuss further um, and then I think Krishna had um, a good point to make too he, he just messaged me that was, a, that was a very comprehensive review though so you covered pretty much everything I wanted to say but uh, Thematically speaking, my big takeaway from this was that uh, everyone in our group had all of their volunteering activities pretty much shut down entirely. Um, and I, the little silver lining that I, the, the silver thread that I saw um, was that, you know, I think the, the salvation there was finding new things for the volunteers to do, whereas I've very much been stuck in this mindset of like, how do we take our old programs and move them online? Maybe. Uh, since that's not so realistic with Westchester seniors out speaking um, on a on a large scale, maybe it's it's time to think of some new ways that we can promote Medicare or, or engage our volunteers. So. Excellent. I think that's a really good point. That right, it isn't just you know recreating in a different setting, but it's it's changing things up, and maybe it's the better way that will continue moving forward. Excellent. Um, so we are almost out of time, so we're going to speed through this quickly. So Nicole's group, group four. I think I'll do the speaking. Uh, Great. We, we would just be repeating almost everything that we just heard over the, over the okay. last. But okay. I think one of our bigger takeaways was um, having this understanding that you have all of these volunteers and you've kept them in different, you know, specific roles without now this is this opportunity to go back to say, you know what, maybe you have different skill sets and here are some of the problems and the issues that we're having here at the executive leadership level or like a few of us know what the problems are and we're not doing a good job of sharing that with this volunteer base that would really like to be involved and we don't even know that they could fix the website or they, you know, or they would be willing uh, with their high schoolers to do some mini fundraising and, and take out, you know, an art project and assemble and deliver for us or, you know, things like that. But uh, there are just better ways and more creative ways to reach out to them to say, here are some of our stumbling blocks. Might you be able to, or would you be interested in doing some brainstorming and seeing how we can solve these? Great, I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, Cause we have many talented people and they're recruited for one thing, but they have many talents and so to tap into those. Um, and the last group, Allie's group, Virtual Five. Who was I guess I was nominated. So, um, of course, like everyone said, we, a lot of the same things were discussed in our group. Um, some successes, certainly, um, using Zoom to connect with clients, different kinds of games and music. So, there was definitely some successes that were shared um, and some ideas that people had. I think that the big um, one of the challenges is still developing community and how do people who, you know, part of volunteering is the work that you do, but also it's the connecting with other volunteers and the connecting with the community and how do you continue to engage people in that way. Um, another one is that we talked, that was talked about is that families are a little zoomed out and kids in school and how do you kind of continue to uh, use that for, format in a positive way. Um, and then finally, one of the things that was a real concern was that as budgets get cut during this time, um, the money that may have been used to buy supplies, to create kits to send to people, that money's kind of been redirected or not available. And so how do you engage volunteers who can't go into um, work directly because of private, privacy concerns, even on, online, and then you also don't have the money for those things. And so those were kind of the main challenges, but there were certainly a lot of successes a lot of exciting things that are being done. Music, 
Mad Libs, reading with a dog. So really some fun ways to kind of, again, engage people. I don't know if anyone wants to add, you know, my group said. Um, so thank you to all the groups. Thank you to everyone for, for joining us this morning um, and learning along with us. What we're going to do for a volunteer year, we are going to send out, um, Jess reported this last session, this last bit to capture, you know, the different groups. So we will send that out. Um, probably not today because we have to figure out how to do that. Um, but we will send out, um, I took some notes on this. We'll send out everybody's contact information so that you have it and can follow up with someone that you had a conversation with or if someone said something and you want to connect with them, you'll be able to do so. Um, and we as a staff are going to go back and kind of evaluate uh, one of the things Octavia said on her way out the door was, you know, let's do more of this. And so we're going to try to figure out if and how we can make that happen. Um, so thank you so much for spending the morning with us. Um, it is not an easy time to do the work that we are doing, um, but everyone is doing great and um, really pushing and trying to figure out, you know, the best way to serve the people that you serve as well as your volunteers. And it shows in the thoughtfulness of your answers and your questions and, and the way um, you're thinking about things. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay, stay safe and we will see you soon. Bye everyone. Thank you, Katie. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.